Uh, right, so moving on now to some TV stuff. Uh, let's talk about Tuka and Bertie Season 2. So, um, oh. Ricardo, if you don't mind, it's why you to do your synopsis for this. But before we begin, just a little pre-ramble. Um, we saw the first season when it, when it, when it, when it came out on, um, on um, Netflix. Uh, we, we, we thoroughly enjoyed it as well. But this is yeah, yeah. us Solid basically... Cool, yeah. Yeah, because we were huge fans of Bojack Horseman, right? So right. because it's from the same studio, it was just like, well, yeah, yeah I mean, he's a Hannah Walter. Yeah, yeah, like, like I mean, we can't go wrong, like you know what I mean. But uh, what, what, what was pretty interesting with this show here, and actually recap the first season going into this one here, is how light it is, like well, emotionally light to it is compared. But yeah, it yeah, yeah, not, it as, was, it not it was, as rough as. Yeah, not as rough as Bojack, but it's still... Yeah, not, not, not as rough yeah. um, as, yeah. as Bojack at all, right? But ever so often, especially when you least expect it, though, they will hit your gut punch. But yeah. it's not, it not as, it doesn't sting as much as, say, Bojack Horseman. Because when they hit you, boy, boy, you'll feel them blues for, like, for these to come. It's it, that serious, right? But here, it's just, like, understanding these two characters. And it's just, for, like, for me, how I see it was just, like, you know, like if it just take a majority, they they just say like you take Broad City and Bojack Horseman and you put it in a blender and you just add yeah. a lot of absurd side gags and stuff like that. That that's what Tuka and Bertie is about, right? I right. I loved Tiffany Haddish in this though. Her yeah. character as Tuka was just hilarious though. Uh, her 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 bit with um, like one bit that that always stood out to me was uh, okay. So there's this sort of um, this stuck up sort of British sounding dog. Um, yeah, you know, this highly this yeah, this who who lives upstairs, right? And he 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 hires Tuka to like write this note for him about bottles. Like just that bit alone had me cracking up for for these. I love that, right? Yeah. But um, and you know, Ali Wong, of course, who plays Roberta as well. Um, who is you know ridiculously, um, you know, um, well, who 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 deals with like a ridiculous yeah. level of social oh, anxiety. Neuron. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I yeah. understand. Yeah, very, very neurotic. Like to a scene degree, right? And you understand why, right? And you know, Speckle, who's played by Stephen Ewan, right? Who is you know the the architect boyfriend to to Roberta, right? And uh, yeah, he gave with you, right? And just the shit that he had to deal with in this relationship, right? So you know, you just love seeing these characters and just all the shenanigans that they get into. But it's just how they will take this time to just explore the characters and give them depth and emotional weight, though. That really makes the show stand out. Even though at the end of the day, it's a lot of absurd humor, but you know, it 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 it, it works given the 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 characters themselves, right? I mean, it's a talking toucan and a song church, right? So. Yeah. I mean, come on, right? But um, last thing I want to say, though, I was really disappointed when I heard a few months later that um, the show got cancelled, right? And I was right. like, wow, like we really could have gotten a season two, right? So, fortunately, um, you know, Adult Swim was like, hey, you know what I mean? Let, 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 let's take this show from, from your hands, though. Let me make a season two. And we're going to get a season three. Hallelujah. They actually revealed that in the second to last episode here. Yes, but, yes, you know, yes. yeah, is w- what, what makes it, before we get to your thoughts, Ricardo, is that this is right up Adult Swim's alley because they yeah. are all about weird, absurd, apeshit, crazy animation. That is right up their alley thread. So, yeah, perfect home for a show like, like Tukan Booty, in my opinion, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah, so Ricardo, thoughts on season one of Tukan Booty, and then we could get yeah, into it. Yeah, I, I, remember, I remember digging it. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, you know, weird off the world, you know, off the world humor. Um, you know, a lot more absurdist than Bojack Horseman was. Uh, Hannah Walt has a real good sense of um space and movement for characters and how to make um, yes, visual humor, visual gags. It works really well. And yeah, I just had a ton of fun with with what she what they was going for. Um, with that season one, and it had a lot of good, you know, emotional true lines to make it work anyway. So yeah, uh, yeah, dug the show for what it was. It was great. Don't like it as much as Bojack, but still up there. You know, it does its own thing. Right. So, yeah, Ricardo, if you don't mind, um, just just quick synopsis on what this, this season was about. In, like, in, in a right. Nutshell. So, second season is all about, it's more about, well, continuing the, the, the anxiety and the drama. Um, basically, what happens is that they're following up on the drama of, of well, they kind of just, you know, continue from the scenarios of part two. They just have their own, their own drama going forward. And then 
uh, you know, the, the bill from, you know, where call she, Bertie, have her job, job in a mess and kind of annoying. She realizes that the guy who was her abuser from season one, he gets his own, like, I think I forget it was basically his YouTube channel or uh, wherever the equivalent of YouTube is in this universe. And they build from that. And then the yeah, main well, well, is that and more of a, of a new business, basically building right. off of, of, of um, basically it's like right. an apology thing, like, oh, I'm sorry for what I did. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Kinda, by, by, yeah. By my it's stuff, right? He's a, he's a pastry chef, by the way. Right, yeah, yeah, right. He, he, well, yeah. So, so he builds from that. He builds his career. Then Bertie gets into a relationship with a nurse because she keeps visiting her aunt, who, well, the same aunt from season one, visiting her. Oh, you know, Tuka, Tuka, Tuka. Tuka, sorry, yeah. Yeah. Tuka, right. Um, visit, visit the aunt. The aunt say they, they meet, she meet this nurse and they get, she get in a relationship with her. Nurse kind of shitty and they have a whole certain uh, mole uh, arc with that. And then Stephen Yeun is obsessive about architecture because he has no freedom, uh, creative freedom. And that's basically the arc. Oh, and then, well, the, 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 the whole narrative is that this basically like a, a slime mold or some type of fungus, you know, covering yeah. the whole city effectively. <laughs> and it's basically... For, I don't for, know for reasons, uh, for reasons. Yeah, but <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a, the old subtext of it might be corporatism or, you know... Um, gentrification or whatever it is basically just corporate culture buried the world uh they have a big disaster um at the end of season season one sorry at the end of the season three finale and uh, yeah that's basically it. they uh, they they get into friendship and, and usually emotional true lines um but yeah that's that's pretty much it for me with this yeah yeah so um i'll i'll, I'll share my thoughts on on the season here and then you know you'll get to your thoughts and then read it right um it's very much what you would expect by now with the show here, right? Yeah. Um, it, it maintains the level of humor, the level of absurdity, absurdity sorry, um, the emotional moment to make sure that it's not, they don't, they don't come at you, you know, punching in the gut ever, every five minutes or so. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll come suddenly and, you know, hit, hit, um, hit, hit, um, hit you over the head ever so often, but in a good way in terms of like character yeah. development, right? I do like how the uh, how Tuka's character, in particular, was um you know how yes. how character yeah, progressed, right? Because, yeah, that um, got a lot more on her this season. Which I enjoyed. Yeah, yeah, because um the, the last season was more on Bertie yeah. and her social anxiety and why she was dealing with it, right? Um, and in that particular episode, um, well, this is episode nine of season one. We learn why. Um, they kind of hint at the fact that um Tuka may be you know bisexual, right? Um, right. so <laughs> I like that. They, they, you know, play, right. they, they pay that off, yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah. So, right. so it plays off now. It, it starts off in this, you know, well, you know, Tuka is just the loud mouth, she's just like the how, how to say it by she's the lively party type of person, so she's just always just outlandish with her stuff, right? So, especially so. In her pursuit for a significant other, she goes about it in this hilarious bit, which plays out like this weird sort of um, reality show kind of thing. I thought that was hilarious. And right. in the process, she runs into this, um, like I say, this this news character, right? Um, yeah. And I, I I like how that plays out as well. Um, yeah, yeah. But but you do see how, uh, what without spoiling much, though, how her character kind of become um, gets dumbed down because yeah. you know, it's like, oh, why are you wearing? short shorts and why you're right, talking right. like this all that kind of stuff so you understand why right and you understand from an emotional perspective why Tuka will go out of this way to to, to please this uh, her new girlfriend so that makes sense right, right. um with Bertie though, um I, I like that you know um well for one thing she she finally goes to uh, a therapist so you right. know uh, points for her for that um Dr. Juan that, that's her name right and she's given all these suggestions and all that kind of stuff and you see how she's trying to apply it to real life now um, and while, while like in the season here that you, you really show how, you know, it, it's just how their relationship uh, uh, is, right? And how it's <clears throat> being affected, you know, so with Bertie being with, um, with this guy, with, um, Speckle all the time, Tuka kind of felt all alone, right? This is what they, yeah. they, they set up in the first season. So it's like, you know, I'm just going to be all up in your face because I want love, right? Well, all of a sudden, Tuka finds someone and now it's like, well, she's hardy with booty, right? So I like that they kind of flip it like that and you see how it all plays out. Um, there's like numerous, you know, subplots. Um, that, that whole moss thing was really weird though, but I do agree it, it may, it may allude, it, it, I, I have a feeling that it is, uh, you know, a metaphor basically for gentrification and all that kind of stuff though. Right, um, that's, yeah, that's yeah. general corporatism and corporate culture. 
Because the, the, the thing was yeah. everywhere. That it had a company, it had a this, it had a product, they had a fear. It's all that yeah. shit. Man. And it, it had I, a I, I love, I love how, um, I, there's this, this particular representative. Yeah. Um, I, every one. time you, you kind of say, okay, so why does it, why does the boss do this? Well, and she just says, well, it's boss because boss doesn't have any emotion because it's right. boss. You know I mean? yeah, so yeah. That, was, that was funny. That was funny. That was funny. Yeah. yeah um, as I said before, you know, I mean, Adult Swim is just the perfect home for this too because I feel like Pussy did this amp on did this did this amp up on the um, on the absurdity way. Yeah. Um, not too 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 much to make it like unbearable right but yeah though they they really make this thing as weird as possible right uh, to, to the point where kind of warning if maybe that's the reason why it was cancelled from from netflix maybe it was just too weird but then again uh, if you had oh, stuff I, like um if you Jack Forsman, Jack, which yeah, exactly. managed to balance the weirdness and absurdity with the hard hit and drama and comedy then you know what was the problem although right. to be fair you know uh tuka had more absurd moments than Right. but still it's yeah. like but oh. this, this one this one weirder because again to the, the plant people and all that kind of stuff man. And again yeah. the whole mosting <laughs> the whole mosting is is really really weird and funny but uh, as i said it started off strong the the true line of the emotions was as strong as season one in my opinion i, I find i don't know okay. if it's a, i felt it could appear off that a little better uh um, yeah um, most, you know, with um with with tuka yeah, like yeah. It, it works, but they just ended off real, real quick. But hopefully, they'll play. They will, you know, season three coming, so they'll pay that off. Um, right. But it was um, just I, like I, I think this was the same, this, the same issue that we had with the with the last season, where yeah. we just felt like you know the 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 final episode was just kind of felt rushed. Like we just yeah. kind of have to tap everything quick, 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 and then just end, right? Yeah. Um, I yeah. I did rewatch that that finale though, and I like it a little bit more though. But still, it did feel like they just have to kind of rush everything, make sure to tick all the boxes before we see. All right, we're done, right? And I felt like here with, with the season two, it's the same thing, especially with, with Tuka's relationship. I felt where we could have gotten a, a more emotional payoff. It's just like, well, that happened, so okay, whatever, you know. Right. Um, yeah, that, that's how I, just, how I was just feeling about it. It's just like, oh, okay, they could, have do, they could have just do more with it um, as it is uh, with, with, that, with that emotional payoff. But it was just there. Um, but again, it's, it's, it's what it is you're doing with it in the end, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, agreed, agreed. So, um, in, in closing, though, um, now now that the show is is on is on Adult Swim, though, I think that it will get a wider audience, um, because yeah, I mean, there's there's a there's an audience for there's a place for for weird, absurd comedy, right? But, um, what what makes this show work in particular though is that you just have these two likable, I should say, lovable characters, right? And you know, they're just so real. Yes, I know they're they're talking birds, right? Whatever, right? But you know, um, you know, and you you, you just enjoy the hijinks. You just enjoy when they're together, how they bounce off each other. You could tell that both Tiffany Haddish and Ali Wong, especially Ali Wong, just had so much fun. You know, mean doing this thing. Um, Stephen Ewan, though, like I don't know, like this knowing that you know he was nominated before for well, for Oscar for Minari. Um just hear them again though and just smile just like yeah wait this this guy just just on a roll but like 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 post walking dead you know he, he just he just having yeah. a blast right now but yeah. he was he just having the time there's, of his life right now you know there's one absolutely funny bit with him with, with a mustache that was hilarious yes <laughs> uh, that was pretty funny they had a lot of great jokes in it they did it they do that they do the, like the SpongeBob Brennan Stimpy thing by saying look at his close up shot and and it was Real, yes. real life thing little stuff like that okay yeah not good not clever yeah so um i have to give the show points boy for just in, embracing its absurdity just like you know what we we, we just gonna go all in with this right because i mean i would admit like i would i would sorry i would assume it's not easy to do stuff like this right so you know, just like with the first season, when it comes to the second season, if we just have like a, a minor gripe, do is that not all the jokes land, right? Um, more, more of it is just reliant on, oh, this is weird. This is this look weird. Ha ha ha. It's weird. Right. It's funny because it's weird, right? Ha ha ha. But sometimes it's like, well, no, it's just weird. Not really funny. But you know I mean, but thankfully, because of the piece of the show, it just moves on to the next bit, to the next, um, you know, story bit and all that kind of stuff, right? So it works here. So, uh, not much more I could say, man. I mean, rating-wise, um, you know, like four, four to five, man. Um, if you're finding first season, yeah, definitely check it out, though. But again, Adult Swim is just the, the perfect home for, for material like this, though. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure how long this show is going to go for. Um, I don't think it should go 
any longer than say four or five seasons. So like it, it should right. have like the same amount like say a Bojack, but then Bojack ran for like six, I believe it was, and then right. ended. Because yeah. here it, it like I don't know if they if they even leading up to a conclusion like well, okay like final full show. stuff is just yeah. you know the life so life stuff right. How much how much um thing had? What do you call it? Um, this show. Bojack. No Bojack. Um, how much this do you call him? Broad City had like four or five. Oh, um, about um, about five. I think so. Yeah. About five. I've never seen. It's it's. It, I don't know where's the arc exactly. To be honest, I don't know where it's going. Like with Bojack, it had a clear arc. Like we know exactly. What, yeah. Where where things going ultimately? Um, yeah. You, you have a lot of roller coasters. Um, but I don't know where where they're going with this one. We'll see. Um, the problem is 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 the nature of Tuka and how she gonna play out because she's like the X Factor character. And I don't know what they're doing with her, to be honest. No. Um, but yeah, I thought this was a solid season. I didn't love it. Um, same, my, my season, I kind of put it rank it roughly the same as season one. As in, it's good, but not great. And they could do a lot more with it, but it's still good. Um, and I dig it for what it is. Um, so that, that is how I feel about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and last, last thing I'll say. Um, but at the end of the day, this, 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 this humor has to be for you, because eh? I yep. know, like, absurdist animation, um, uh, comedic animation is not for everyone, though. Um, some people might just watch this and just think it's just too weird or weird for the sake of it, but, um, no, I, I, I think that, you know, despite its weirdness, because remember, again, it's Adult Swim, they could just go, you know, like, like, they've, they've, they've just built a reputation of just going all in when it comes to weird shit, like, yeah, just look at the little yeah. promos that show, you know, mean after the commercials, right? Like, yeah, look yeah. at those, right? like, like, you, you I, I haven't seen those things in ages, right? I'm like, wow, this shit just, like, Oh, fucked up though. Wow. Right? Yeah, only, only record more. This stuff funny though. <laughs> yeah. That one with, with, with the with the Freddy Krueger character, I forget I forget his name um, was just Scary Terry. Wow. Yeah, Scary Terry's like jeez, <laughs> but yeah, that was hilarious too. You know what I mean? So again, you know what I mean? Perfect, perfect home man. So I I feel like um Lisa Hanwalt just probably had a blast here. Um yeah. oh yes, I forgot to mention something too. The Emmy content, the TV Emmy con- content is slightly toned down a little bit more in right. this season here. Like, you, well, because of Netflix, you didn't have to worry too much about, um, you know, <laughs> sen- uh, you know, um, overly censored stuff, right? So, like, you yeah. know, in the first season, you would see boobs, you would see, you know, just um, you know, characters would like literally, you know, drop f bombs and stuff like that, and, uh, stuff like that. Um, here, you know, they they bleep it, right? So, I imagine. If it does ever come out on, you know, Blu-ray, whatever it is, you'll hear everything. But I felt like, you know, in terms of like the language, it's not as I don't want to say bad. I don't want to come off like some old guy like oh, bad language. Oh. But it's right. it's not as noticeable in this season than in the first one. It, you, you could tell like she had to kind of play by Cartoon Network's rules a little bit. So you know, now it's more of a TV. Now it's a TV fourteen and a TV right. Emmy, right? So that's just something I noticed. But it still doesn't take away from the humor and, you know, the, the you know, just the characterization and just the likability of these characters, right? So, right. yeah, I mean, if you're a fan of the first season, you will have a blast with season two. Um, if you haven't seen season two, then you need to watch season one. You can't jump into this one just so at all. It's not that type of show. You have to know these characters inside and out to, to really appreciate it. And yeah, you should, you should enjoy it, man, for what it was. You should, right. for what it is, sorry. You should enjoy it for what it is. <laughs>